Aloha and welcome to our video on volcanoes and plate tectonics. In this video we'll describe the origin of magma and then we'll explain the relationships between plate tectonics and volcanism. Okay, so let's talk about the origin of magma. What is magma? Magma quite simply is molten rock. When it's below the surface we call it magma, when it reaches the surface we call it lava, but it's basically molten rock. It's what makes up the mantle and this, by studying lava we can see what's in the mantle. Now, to melt rock, it requires a couple things, heat, pressure, and water content. To melt rock, we require a lot of heat, and we can get heat from depth. The deeper you go into the earth, the warmer it gets, but it doesn't get hot enough to melt rock. So we have to add additional sources of heat, and the additional sources of heat comes from this friction of the plate. So as the plates are rubbing against each other, it generates some heat, and that'll help melt rocks, and also the mantle itself. The mantle itself is going to be a lot hotter since it is molten rock and it'll melt rocks that come into that. We saw that during convergent subduction areas. Also, the heat will rise. So if we have magma plumes or magma bursts coming up, then what happens is this magma will melt the rock around it. Okay, we also have pressure, and pressure is going to be a little more interesting. The deeper inside of the earth, we get more pressure, and that pressure can kind of squeeze rock together and keep it from melting. It'll keep the pieces close together. When we release that pressure, we get what we call decompression melting. So what that means is if I have a piece of rock here and I'm applying a whole bunch of pressure to it, it'll keep all those particles together in a solid form. But once I remove the pressure, we get rid of the pressure on it, it allows the little bits and pieces to all move apart from each other and we get what we call decompression melting that way. And then finally we have water content. And rocks that have a little more moisture in them tend to melt at a cooler temperature than rocks that don't. So a couple percent of water is going to translate to hundreds of degrees cooler and that helps out too. If we can get a little bit of water into the rocks, into the minerals, then what's going to happen is they'll melt a little bit faster. Now, we see a lot of volcanoes happening at the boundary areas. We talked about two of them, and the two we wanted to talk about are divergent and convergent boundaries. A divergent boundaries, if you can remember, we have two plates that are moving apart. So as the crust moves apart, it's going to expose the mantle, and the mantle will rush up through this opening, and then we'll get these volcanoes there. So at divergent plates, remember we have these plates that are moving apart. They create this rift, and in this rift is where we have magma come up, and we have volcanism happening there. Convergent plates are going to be a little bit different. At convergent plates is where we have two plates, and these two plates are going into each other. Now, generally, one plate will be a little more dense than the other, and that dense plate is going to subduct under it. And we can see that subduction going on here. As it goes down, this plate is going to get a little bit warmer, it's going to get a little hotter, and it's going to start melting. And we can kind of see that going on here. And as it melts, that less dense rock is going to work its way upwards. We can see it working its way upward here. And then we get these volcanoes here. If it's in continental crust, we have these continental volcanic arcs. And remember, if it was oceanic, we had an oceanic volcanic arc. So we can see at these boundaries, we have this volcanism going on, whether we're splitting it apart at a divergent, or whether we're melting down more material and allowing that to rise up. Now, you may have heard this term before. It's called the ring of fire. And the ring of fire is this area that you can see in the map that's in this kind of peachy reddish kind of color. What it's showing us is where we see a lot more of our volcanic activity, a lot more of our earthquake activity, and it's also the boundary of the Pacific Plate. So we see where all these boundaries are going on, and that gives us this idea of where we have these earthquakes and where we have these volcanoes happening all the time. Now, not all volcanism happens at the boundaries. We can have intraplate volcanism, and what that means is if we have our large plates, our tectonic plate here, we can have volcanoes happening in the middle of them, and that's what this interplate is. Now, where this occurs is where we generally will have what we call a hot spot, and that hot spot is where we see this mantle plume. So we'll see this magma rising up here in one area, and it'll actually break through the oceanic lithosphere and form a volcano on the ocean floor. And over time, that volcano can grow and grow and grow and become an island like it has in Hawaii. 
Now we know that the plate is moving and that plate is moved over this hot spot. So the older islands are the ones that are going to be further away. Like Kauai is about 3.8 to 5.6 million years old. But we also have the island of Hawaii where we have currently Mauna Loa and Kilauea, two active volcanoes over the hot spot that are still showing activity. So intraplate happens over what we call hot spots. Okay. So that's it for our short introduction to volcanoes. Um, good luck on the lesson and the quizzes, and we'll see you in the next video.